Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Parameter Estimation and we're going to look at Bayes Estimation. Now one note is that this topic has such deep roots in decision theory um, and a lot of people cover Bayes Estimation within decision theory. And we may cover decision theory in this playlist if, if people want to see that. Um, but otherwise, we're just going to cover Bayes' estimation from a different angle. Now, the setting that we're in is our goal is to estimate this unknown parameter theta. And since it's the Bayes' uh, theory, it, it's a random, or a random variable, or it could be random vector. So let's let P of theta be the prior distribution of theta that lives in the parameter space omega. Now, the prior is our prior beliefs about theta before we collect data. Now we collect data, sample size of n, that is uh, independent, identically distributed with this distribution, f of x given theta. Once we collect data, we derive the posterior distribution, f of theta given x. Right, so this is the random variable, and this is our updated belief about theta after we've collected the data. Uh, next, we use the posterior distribution to derive an estimate, say theta hat for theta. So this is the setting that we're in. Now, before we give the exact Bayes estimator or estimation theory, I want to go through some background stuff. And first we'll cover loss functions. A loss function is a non-negative function that indicates the loss when estimating theta with theta hat. Now the first one, first of three that we'll cover is what's called absolute loss, so which is theta minus theta hat, or the absolute value. And it sort of makes sense, intuitive sense, if theta hat is close to the unknown parameter, we get a small number, you know, and zero if it equals, and if they're far apart, the number gets big. So the, the bigger the loss function, the further apart we are. Squared loss is the squared distance between our estimate and the unknown parameter. The closer we are, the smaller the number. The further we are, the bigger the number. Now, a, a zero one loss function is, it's either one or zero. So it's one if we're not equal and it's zero if we're equal. So that's our loss. Now, I think these are the most common loss functions. But within each of these, there's so many variants and ways to generalize it. Um, I would encourage you to look further into that. We're just not going to cover it in this video. Now, there's something a little bit unsatisfactory about loss functions. Is how do we calculate it, right? Okay, we, we've collected data and we have our estimate. But what's the true unknown value for theta? You know, we'll never know because it's, you know, it's an unknown. It's, but, so what we do is, what if we average this, these loss functions, whichever one we, we, you know, when we're coming up with a Bayes estimator, we have to pick a loss function and then, uh, and then that's what we use. But what if we look at the average over all possible theta values and then find the um, theta that makes, minimizes that? Well, that's what we end up doing. So we look at the mean loss of, you know, for a given loss function. So it's the, at, you know, expected value of that loss function, which says you take that, whatever that function is, times the density and integrate it over all possible values of theta. And that's called mean loss. Now, every area, finance to, you know, you pick a field, they call it something different. Some that call it risk. Some call it cost, some, you know, everybody has a different name. Here we're going to call it mean loss. Sometimes I'll call it risk, but usually mean loss. We're going to denote the average or the mean loss by R of theta, hat, which, you know, is, is this. Now, the Bayes estimator is the estimate theta hat, which minimizes the mean loss. So theta hat is the arg max of the risk function or the mean loss. 
So it goes through and picks and finds that theta hat that it's the minimum and then that's what it is. So now let's look at what that means for these different loss functions. So let, uh, this is the Bayes estimator for each loss function. So the first one we'll look at is absolute loss and that is the mean loss which is represented by this. Now remember we have collected data and now it's considered fixed or a constant. And so this estimate is a function of the x's and considered fixed. You know, and, and now we're going to integrate it over all possible theta values. But this is the absolute value. So when is it positive, when is it negative? We split the integral up. We go from negative infinity to theta hat and then theta hat to negative infinity. And when we're in this range, the thetas are bigger than theta hat, so this is positive, right? And then when we're in this range, theta hat's bigger than the thetas, so this is positive. So this becomes this. Now what we do is we take this f function times each of those, right? And that's what we get here, right? So this is times that, and then this times that, but that is a constant in regards to this, so it can be taken out front, and then we're integrating f from theta hat to infinity, which is really one minus the CDF of you know evaluated at theta hat. And then over here we take this times that, the theta hat, which comes out front, and then it's just f of theta hat, and then we get this times this, you know, don't forget the minus, and we're integrating this. Now now we take the derivative with respect to theta hat. And then you, you might think, well, wait, wait, why are we taking it times theta hat, or the derivative with respect to theta hat? Well, here's the reason. We've just integrated out theta. And when we try to find the minimum of this function, we pick a theta hat and look at the value. Then we pick another theta hat and look at the value. And we, our goal is to find that theta hat that makes this as small as possible. Well, that's where the derivative comes in, but it has to be with respect to theta hat because that's our variable that we're trying to use to minimize that function. So here, based on calculus, we're, we plug in theta hat, but remember, we, we plug in that and then it's minus plug in that, so that's where that negative comes in, and we just plug in theta hat. Here, um, it's a function of theta hat, so we take this, the derivative of this times that. So derivative of this is 1 times that. And then that minus comes in, and that's where this comes. And then it's the uh, theta hat times this derivative. And then this is 0, and this is just little f of theta hat, which is what we get here. And then the minuses cancel. Here, um, the derivative of that is 1 times the derivative of uh, times this function, which is this, and then it's this times the derivative of that, which is this, and then the fundamental theorem of calculus says, you know, when you take this derivative, just plug that value in. Um, now, here, this cancels with this, this one cancels with that, and we're left with uh, 2 times capital F of theta minus 1, set it equal to 0, which says F of theta equals one half, and so the value the the value that makes that one half is the median. So the the median of the posterior distribution is our Bayes estimate when we use the absolute loss function. And just for uh, completeness, if you take the derivative of this, which is the second derivative, you get two times little f, which is always positive. So it is a minimum. So this theta hat. The median of the posterior distribution is the Bayes estimator with absolute loss. Now let's look at squared loss. So we take the mean of the squared function, which is this. Now what we do here is we expand it. So um, you get theta hat squared, which is here, you know, because and then you take that multiplied in, which is this, and then it's this times that, that times that. You know, and then times, and that's where we get this. Now the theta hat can come out, but this theta hat has to stay in, and then we get squared, theta hat squared. But notice that this is the posterior density, and we're integrating over all possible values of theta, so this is one. 
and then this is a constant let's call it B and this is a constant let's call it C so we have a quadratic function in theta hat well the derivative of that is 2 times theta hat minus 2B set it equal to 0 theta hat is B so theta hat is equal to this which implies that theta hat is the mean of our posterior distribution so when we use squared loss the mean of the posterior distribution is the Bayes estimator now for completeness if we take the derivative of this we just get 2 which is always positive so this is a minimum so the median the mean of the posterior is the Bayes estimator for squared loss now let's look at the 0 1 loss function so we want to find the uh, mean loss right and so when theta hat is below theta then it's 1 so we take it 1 times the density of that and then when it equals that then we take it times 0 and we're integrating from theta hat to theta hat and when it's, when it's above it then we integrate from theta hat to infinity so it's 1 times that well this is always 0 so let's get rid of it and then we're going to do a little trick here we're going to put in the limit so let's go down a little bit say uh, delta and then take the limit as delta goes to zero so then it approaches that again oh that should be a theta hat and then um, here we do the same thing we add a little bit but when we take the limit then it goes back to this one right so in here um, if we just look at this piece here there's a little gap between uh, theta hat minus and theta hat plus there's a little gap in there and so since we know this integrates to one we can take one minus and then just integrate that little gap right that we is in there and then then we take the limit in and we get this right but when you look at the area under the curve between, you know, a little bit below theta hat and a little bit above theta hat, and then let delta go to zero, that, that limit actually limits to whatever the height is at that value. So this is equal to this. Well, our goal is to minimize this, right? That's the mean loss. But to minimize this, we need to maximize f of theta. Well, what's the maximum value of that? Well, it's the mode. So to maximize the mean loss or the risk, we want to maximize this density, which implies you know, the value that maximizes that is the mode of the posterior distribution. So the mode of the posterior distribution is the Bayes estimator when we use 0, 1 loss. And I did all this for discrete or uh, continuous variables and you can actually quite easily show the same results for when uh, theta is discrete and I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you guys well that's all I have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that I sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye